Hey everyone, it's Ladine from Sugar Stitches Quilt Co. I have such a treat for you today. We are going to make this adorable zipper pouch with the 32 at a time method for making half square triangles. I had such a great response to the video that I made previously about the 32 at a time method for half square triangles. So many people asked me about what I was going to do with my half square triangles. So I decided to put them into a zipper pouch. You can make anything you want with the half square triangles, but I decided that this quick zipper pouch would be perfect. With the size pouch that we are making, we actually have enough half square triangles to make two pouches. If you didn't catch the first part of this video, then I've linked it here for you to go back and watch the 32 at a time method for making these cute little half square triangles. They came out adorable and these finish at three and a half inches. So I decided to make two rows of them and four columns in this zipper pouch. I have some more exciting news for you. If you like tutorials and skill building videos like this, you are going to love my brand new community membership, Quilt Academy. Quilt Academy is a place where you can build and refine your skills while engaging with a beautiful community of quilters around the world. It's filled with exclusive patterns, video tutorials, resources, friendship, and so much more. Doors are opening on June 1st, 2023 for seven days only. And then the doors close and you'll miss your opportunity to secure the lowest price ever for this community. If you're watching this video after that period, Doors open again every quarter for a short period of time, so you never want to miss your opportunity to join. So visit the link that I have in the description below for more information to join or to jump on the wait list to be notified as soon as the doors open again. I hope to see you inside because we will be having so much fun with the patterns that I create just for you. So let's jump into the tutorial. So let's cover the supplies that you're going to need to make this zipper pouch. We need our quilting ruler, scissors, a pen, a zipper, and the zipper can be any size, but you want to make sure it is at least the length of the pouch that you're going to be making. Two, two and a half inch squares of fabric, which will be our zipper tabs. You'll need your two panels that will make up the outside of our pouch. And I chose to make two rows of four half square triangles. So my front and back panels of my pouch measure six and a half inches by 12 and a half inches. So I'm going to use those measurements for the remainder of my supplies, which include the lining fabric. You need two pieces of lining fabric and mine measure six and a half by 12 and a half, same as my outside panel. And then I have a piece of batting here that I will use to quilt my pouch. And typically when I'm quilting a small project, I'll usually use an additional one inch or so on all four sides, depending on how much quilting I'll be doing on the project. I won't be doing very much around these half square triangles, so I don't need as much batting to take up the shrinkage that happens during the quilting process. If you plan on doing a lot of quilting or quilting on a long arm, then you may want to increase the size of your batting. If you don't wanna use batting and quilt the outside of your pouch, you could also use a fusible fleece and just simply fuse that to your outside pieces so it gives the pouch some texture and depth without the quilting. The quilting is purely optional. So now let's go ahead and get started with the different pieces on our pouch. First, we're going to make our zipper tabs. I've got a two and a half inch square of fabric here that I will press in half. And then we want to take each side and fold that in about halfway. So we'll have a halfway fold on both sides and then the center fold. And I'm gonna take that over to my iron and press that and I'll come back. Okay, and so I have my zipper tabs and you can see that I have folded them in about a quarter of an inch or so and then folded them in half. 
And so we end up with a little piece of fabric like this that we're going to use on the edge of our zipper ends. But before we do that, we need to go ahead and cut our zipper down. So we're going to be trimming our zipper down. Again, you want to cut it one inch shorter than your panels. So I'll be cutting mine at 11 and a half inches. So first we'll mark our zipper and you'll simply just place your ruler along the zipper and then mark with a pen. Just make sure you're using something that doesn't bleed through and you're just going to make a mark. And then we'll mark our other side. And now I have my two marks. We want to make sure that we open the zipper first. And then just to keep these together for sewing, I like to line it up since I've opened the zipper, line it up and then just put a pin in there just to hold them together to make sure that when you sew that, that the line is straight across. I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine and sew a line across the zipper to form a zipper stop. And now you can see where I've sewn on both areas. And then we're just going to trim a little ways away from the sewn line, approximately one eighth to a quarter of an inch away. And just make that cut. And then we'll take our zipper tabs and place the zipper inside. This doesn't have to be exact where it is, but you just want to make sure that you have room on both sides. Placing the zipper inside and then folding that tab across the zipper. And then I like to put a wonder clip. There. And then what we'll do is we will sew right along the edge of this piece of fabric. And you want to make sure that you are catching the back of the fabric as well and that you're sewing through both sides and your zipper. And then we'll take our second zipper tab and do the same thing, placing it inside and folding the fabric over and then putting a wonder clip. And then I'll just sew both of those edges. Okay, and you can see I've sewn both of my zipper tabs, and then we're just going to trim them. You want to make sure that you're trimming so that your cut aligns with the zipper. You can either use a rotary cutter and your ruler or your scissors. Make sure that you're not cutting into your zipper and just trim. Okay, so now I have my zipper tabs all finished. And now we can start sewing the zipper to our panels. Okay, and I have my quilted panels now, and you can see that I've just done a small amount of quilting with this beautiful pink Aurifil thread. Um, this is actually a 28 weight thread, and I quilted this on my regular machine. I have a blog article about quilting with heavier weights with your domestic sewing machine, so if you would like to take a look at that I have a link for you below but I didn't want to do too much quilting on this project I just wanted a little bit to have an accent and so you can see I just quilted some lines here on my panel and that was with just a little bit of batting and so I've done that on both of my panels that will make the front and back of my pouch so let's work with one of these first We'll take one of the panels, placing it right sides up. And so I know that I want my half square triangles oriented in this direction with this being the top of my pouch. So this is the top where I'm going to line up my zipper. So you just want to make sure that your panel is oriented in the right way, depending on your own design. And then we'll take the zipper and place it with the zipper portion face down on the panel. I'm eyeballing the center here, but we essentially want about a quarter to half an inch on each side of our zipper. If you'd like to measure it, you can, but again, I'm just eyeballing it and place that right along the top, aligning the raw edges. And then we'll take one of our lining pieces and place that right sides down on top of the panel and zipper and make sure that your zipper is open before you do any sewing. And then we'll line up these raw edges along here, and then I'm going to use some wonder clips and clip everything together.
Okay, and now that we have that clipped, you'll sew along the top edge here where your zipper is. You can use a zipper foot, but you actually don't need to. You should be able to get close enough with your presser foot, but if you can't, you are certainly welcome to use a zipper foot. But we'll sew about a quarter of an inch seam along the top edge of our pouch. Okay, and I'm back and you can see that I have my seam sewn right along the top. And then we'll just open this up and finger press this back. And what I like to do is go ahead and press that with an iron. We're just going to press that away from the zipper. And sometimes when you have something like this where it's been quilted, it does help to help everything lie flatter. So I'm going to take that over to the iron and I'll be right back. Okay, I am back from the iron and you can see that I have pressed everything flat away from the zipper. And then we're going to again put that with the zipper on top. We'll take our second panel, second quilted panel that I have, and we're going to be lining this up with the zipper. So I'm putting this down. So this is the top of my pouch and then take the panel that we just completed and place that on top. And again, lining up and centering the zipper. And then we'll take our second lining piece and place that right sides down. And we want to line up this top edge and the sides. Don't worry about this extra section that we have here. It looks like everything's not aligned. But when we move further in the process, you're going to realize that everything's going to be fine. After I line everything up, I'm going to use Wonder Clips to hold everything together. And then I'll take it to the sewing machine just as I did before and sew a quarter of an inch across the top. And we'll do as before and finger press those seams back away from the zipper. Then we'll be ready to finish off our pouch. Okay, I am back from the iron and you can see I have pressed the areas away from the zipper. If you wanted to, you could top stitch along this line here to make sure that everything stays away from the zipper. I'm not going to do that on this project, but you certainly could if you'd like. And then to finish everything up, we are going to place our outside panels right sides together and our lining panels right sides together. So we're going to line up all of our raw edges making sure our sides are nested up nicely. And then I'm going to use Wonder Clips around the edge to hold everything together. Now I have all my sides clipped together and we are going to sew all the way around all four sides, leaving an opening here at the bottom of our lining so that we can flip our pouch. Okay, and I am back from the sewing machine. I have sewn all the way around and left this opening here so we can turn our pouch. If you'd like, you can clip the corners of your pouch so that they will pop out a little bit easier. Just make sure that you don't cut into your sewn line. I particularly like to do this on the panels that I have quilted just because it reduces the bulk there as well. And then after we've done that, we'll go ahead and turn our pouch inside out. Just want to be careful and make sure that you're not tearing any of your seams. And I like to just use my finger and poke here, or if you have another type of tool that you'd like to use to poke out those corners, you can. And then what I like to do after I've worked everything out is give that a nice press. And especially with the quilted portions, you want to make sure that those seams are lying as flat as you can get them because of the bulk in those areas. So I am going to give this a good press and I will be right back. Okay, I've given that a nice press, but remember we need to finish the bottom portion of our lining. So I like to push, to push those corners out. And then we're left with that opening. And then we'll just fold those raw edges on the inside so that none of them are exposed. And then I just put a few wonder clips there to hold that together. 
and then I'll just stitch about an eighth of an inch or so along that line to close up that opening. Okay, and you can see that I have sewn my pouch closed, and then you just want to make sure that you don't have any openings in your seam, and then just push that inside your bag, and then we're all finished. Take a look at that. We have our zipper, and look at that adorable quilted pouch that we made with our half square triangles. Isn't it so cute? And it's so quick. Even though I made this with my half square triangles, you don't have to do that for this type of pouch. You could use anything. You could use squares of fabric if you had that, or you could quilt something else. It's all up to you. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on not only making the zipper pouch, but also how to use your half square triangle blocks. So what a cute and fun project that we shared together today. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.